Wai Wan Er knocked on Nai Yin Ying's door to inform her that she had prepared a change of clothes for her, and that she could go ahead and sleep tonight. She also informed her that she had to go out. Wai Wan Er emphasized that she shouldn't wait for her. Concerned, Nai Yin Ying inquired of Lai Wan Er where she was going since it was late. Receiving no response from the other side of the door, Nai Yin Ying proceeded to grab the towel and stepped out of the bathtub. With stealth, she approached the window, created a peephole, and gazed outside. Through the hole, Nai Yin Ying observed Lai Wan Er engaged in conversation with Huang Sanyuan regarding Cheng Dale, who had supposedly found some news. Lai Wan Er queried Huang Sanyuan if Cheng Dale was safe, and Huang Sanyuan replied that Cheng Dale had sent someone. Surprised by the conversation she overheard, Nai Yin Ying listened as Huang Sanyuan instructed Lai Wan Er that she needed to see Cheng Dale for the specifics. Lai Wan Er responded that it seemed she wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Huang Sanyuan escorted Lai Wan Er urging her to hurry along as Cheng Dale had been waiting for a long time. As their conversation concluded, Nai Yin Yang's concern grew. She uttered Lai Wan Er's name, realizing why Lai Wan Er had been afraid to see Cheng Dale. She remarked that Cheng Dale was threatening her. Nai Yin Yang envisioned Cheng Dale laughing villainously as he ordered Lai Wan Er that he had discovered where she lived. He warned her, insisting that if she didn't want anything to happen to him, she must behave in Toad Village and serve him well. Dai Yining stated that Cheng Dale even used that man to force her to do such things. She wondered why Lai Wan Er had to do it. She pondered if Lai Wan Er was willing to commit herself to a villain like Cheng Dale for the sake of a heartless man. Dai Yining also mentioned that allowing Lai Wan Er to stay another day with Cheng Dale would mean she would suffer another day. With determination, she decided that she would kill Cheng Dale and take Lai Wan Er away. Quietly, Nai Yining slipped out. Meanwhile, on the night of April 15th, on the streets of Toad City, inside the carriage, Lai Wan Er reflected on the smooth development of Toad Village during this period. Cheng Dale was very busy, and she was also busy. She pondered that she helps him with many things and was trained by him to become a manager of Toad Village. Recalling that Cheng Dale wanted her to learn how to manage the empire, although he did not understand it himself, she observed that he had this idea. She thinks Cheng Dale hadn't called her for a private meeting in a long time. She noted that Su Ying was very knowledgeable about business and also had some understanding of administration. Determined, Lai Wan Er wanted to prove that she was stronger than Su Ying and to be confident in front of Cheng Dale. She aimed to be smart, capable, and work even harder. Worried, she pondered what Cheng Dale would say when they met next, wondering if he would compliment her and what he would look like. As the bustling sound reached her ears, Lai Wan Er curiously peered out from the carriage, wondering about the bustling noise. Observing the lively crowd outside, she mused aloud and pondered if this was the Lantern Festival. Perplexed, she questioned why Toad Village was hosting such an event without her prior knowledge, feeling somewhat left out. Huang Sanyuan's hearty laughter filled the air as he explained that Su Ying sensed everyone's busyness in the past year and the lingering effects of war and had arranged this festival as a gesture of relaxation for all. He further revealed that Su Ying, recognizing Lai Wan Er's busy schedule, had intentionally kept the event a secret from her, and planned the event without informing her. Also, he disclosed that Cheng Dale seized the opportunity to surprise her. Upon hearing Huang Sanyuan's revelation, Lai Wan Er's smile turned red as she softly uttered the Lantern Festival, and her gaze drifted toward the lively street. Huang Sanyuan shared the local belief that confessing one's feelings during the Lantern Festival ensured that they would stay together forever in old age. In some places, Zhu Wenting appeared to be expressing affection towards Kin Man, while Liu Bei was seen in the company of Adelina. Tong Fei and Zhao Zilong enjoyed the festivities. Zhu Shenji, Zhang Fei, and Gao Fei Bao were enjoying themselves drinking. Huang Sanyuan continued, commenting that after tonight, many men in Toad City would likely be heading toward marriage. Chuckling heartily, he jested on the prospect and playfully inquired if Lai Wanner had someone in her heart, asserting that she couldn't afford to miss such an occasion if she did. Lai Wanner's cheeks flushed suddenly, her mind swirling with the notion of staying together until old age. She contemplated whether this was really the case. Recalling Nai Yin Yang's advice that she had to speak with Cheng Dale, Lai Wan Er realized its wisdom and that there was no point in dragging it out. With a surge of excitement, she acknowledged that she had been holding back for too long and was now at her breaking point. Determined, she resolved to express herself sooner or later and go further. She was excited to confess her feelings and stay together forever, believing that tonight was the best time. With friends' provocative words, she remained in such an atmosphere. Lai Wanner's contemplative nature resembled buried seeds that finally could not suppress the smell of mud. 
just as roots slowly spread, sprout, blossom, and bear fruit. In Cheng Dalei's study room at his residence, he was taken aback to find Lai Weiner present. Promptly, he gestured for her to take a seat beside him. He mentioned that the message sent by Bai Yuanfei raised concerns about Lai Xingzai. This prompted him to quickly call her. In response to Lai Weiner's inquiry about Lai Xingzai's safety, Cheng Dalei smiled reassuringly as he shared the news. He informed her that despite numerous attempts on Lai Xingzai's life, none had been successful and Lai Xingzai had arrived safely in Luofeng City. Expressing her relief, Lai Wanner affirmed that she was already aware of the situation, highlighting Lai Xingzai's intelligence. Continuing the conversation, Cheng Dalei proceeded to provide Lai Wanner with an update on the dire situation in Luofeng City. He began by explaining that the former city lord had tragically succumbed to pirates, leaving behind a population of soldiers who were old, weak, or disabled. Furthermore, Cheng Dalei highlighted the ongoing threat posed by the sea surrounding the city, which remained a significant hub for pirate activity. Concerned, Lai Wanner expressed her fear, noting that since Luofang City was far from Liangzhu, they wouldn't be able to provide much help in the future. Cheng Dalei reassured her, stating he owed Lai Xingzai a favor and would help him out. He mentioned that they were considering how to intervene and express their willingness to help if doing so. But the importance was dependent on Lai Xingzai's fate. Further emphasizing the chaotic state of the empire, Cheng Dalei stressed that Toad's stronghold couldn't remain out of it forever, and that there would be war in the future. He also highlights that some Ring tribes spectate them from outside, and he expresses uncertainty about what the Ring tribes are up to. In response, Lai Wanner disclosed her efforts to cultivate manpower and embed spies within vassal manors. She outlined her plan to establish a talent recruitment center in Toad City. Confidently, she mentioned that she picked up a martial arts master and emphasized that Nai Yin Yang was pretty good. She plans to have her as her assistant. Curious, Cheng Dalei asked Lai Wanner why Nai Yin Yang hadn't mentioned about the reason for her presence. Lai Wanner responded that it seemed like Nai Yin Yang had been hunted down by her enemies and had hidden there after being seriously injured. She mentioned that she was still investigating, and Cheng Dalei nodded in understanding. Following their conversation about Cheng Dalei's recent design five-year plan and acknowledged that this day starts the first year of that plan. Curious about the plan's specifics, Lai Wanner inquired further about the five-year plan, prompting Cheng Dalei to explain it to her. After their discussion, a moment of silence ensued. Cheng Dalei, noticing Lai Wanner's contemplative expression, became concerned. He questioned her with a hint of perplexity, asking what troubled her and what piqued her thoughts while gazing at him. With a flirtatious gaze, Lai Wanner brought up the rumor she had heard about Cheng Dalei's search for a red-haired girl outside. Playfully, she expressed curiosity about the girl's appearance, teasingly asking if she was attractive. She suggested that if he wanted, she could glance at him. Engrossed in his duties, Cheng Dalei sought clarification regarding the red-haired girl Lai Wanner mentioned. After a moment of recollection, he clarified if she was referring to Sima Kayan, whom he was actively searching for due to urgent business matters. In a reassuring tone, he suggested to Lai Wanner not to pay heed to the idle chatter of his men, indicating that they often indulged in nonsensical rumors. He added that he had already addressed the issue with them, leaving Lai Wanner pleasantly surprised by his response. Undeterred in her flirtatious banter, Lai Wanner continued by inquiring about Cheng Dalei's wife and expressing surprise at not seeing her. Cheng Dalei simply explained that his wife had taken their daughter to see the Lantern Festival and was also attending a conference. Highlighting the rarity of such events in Toad City, he asked Lai Wanner if she wasn't interested in attending. Stubbornly, Lai Wanner responded that she had no desire to do so, indicating that she was already tired of seeing it in the capital. Cheng Dalei responded with mild disappointment. He informed her that he had to go and host the conference later. As Cheng Dalei glanced at Lai Wanner with a questioning look, Lai Wanner found herself struggling to articulate her thoughts. Summoning her inner resolve, she mentally urged herself to speak up, knowing this might be her only chance before Cheng Dalei left. After a brief moment of hesitation, she realized that if she let this opportunity slip by, she might never gather the courage to broach the subject again. With a sudden surge of bravery, Lai Wanner boldly grabbed Cheng Dalei's face, forcing him to meet her gaze as she prepared to express herself. As Lai Wanner pulled Cheng Dalei towards her, their movements ended with them lying on the couch, Cheng Dalei positioned on top of her. Caught completely off guard by Lai Wanner's sudden actions, Cheng Dalei could only manage to utter her name in surprise. As she released her grip, tears welled up in Lai Wanner's eyes, her emotions overwhelming her. 
With a tremble in her voice, she pleaded with Cheng Dalei not to leave and to look at her more. In response, Cheng Dalei's expression softened, a sense of realization dawning upon him. He gently calls Lai Wan'er's name, recognizing at that moment that he had neglected many things. The air between them was heavy with Lai Wan'er's unspoken feelings. Without warning, the ceiling above Cheng Dalei collapsed, creating a gaping hole. Caught off guard, Cheng Dalei looked upward to witness Nai Yinying descending from above. With a firm grip on the sword, Nai Yinying aimed it directly at Cheng Dalei. As Cheng Dalei turned, his instincts alerted him to the imminent danger posed by Nai Yin Yang's presence. In a swift move, Cheng Dalei activated the heart possession technique. He instinctively reached out to shield Lai Wan'er, but his actions resulted in him receiving the stab instead and made him elicit a groan of pain. Cheng Dalei asserted that the strike aimed at the flesh, not piercing the heart. He also reflected that he couldn't believe he had grabbed it barehanded. He struggled, realizing that Nai Yin Yang was incredibly fast, and if his reaction had been any slower, he would have died instantly. He recognized her as an extremely difficult enemy and decided to use his Alfie Quick Sword technique, a straightforward sword form, to attack her back. Outside, Gao Feihu heard the noise and realized that someone had broken in. He urgently exclaimed that Cheng Dalei was in danger and called for someone to come quickly and hasten them. Lai Wan'er was in pain from the impact of her fall. In a fit of rage, Nai Yining launched another assault, spewing curses as she launched another attack. Responding swiftly, Cheng Dalei repelled Nai Yining's attack with his thunderclap and technique, causing Nai Yining's arm to be slightly injured and eliciting her to groan in pain. He observed that the sword had got her right shoulder, realizing that she was no match for him in a head-to-head -head fight. With Nai Yining struggling to rise, Lai Wan'er indignantly recognized Nai Yining and muttered her name. Determined, Nai Yin Yang knew she needed to swiftly kill Cheng Dalei and take Lai Wan'er away, otherwise, they would be surrounded as soon as the guards arrived. She lunged forward, employing her 10-step instant kill technique, dashing towards Cheng Dalei with incredible speed and slashing at him. Cheng Dalei managed to block the attack with his sword. The attack was as swift as the wind, the aggressiveness was like a ghost urging to take one's life. Cheng Dalei realized that her speed was faster than his after possession making her incredibly powerful. He pondered who had sent this assassin, while Nai Yinying thought it was time for the poison to take effect. With a short sword in her hand, Nai Yinying's attack resembled a violent storm as she used her 10-step instant kill technique. Cheng Dalei swiftly deflected it using exploding fireworks. However, Cheng Dalei eventually stumbled during the sword fight, losing his grip on his sword. Injured, he felt his body growing numb, realizing that Nai Yinying's sword was poisoned. He cursed as the sword fell from his hand and attempted to reach it. Nai Yinying quickly kicked the sword away from him. Seizing the opportunity, Cheng Dalei saw an opening in her and kicked Nai Yinying's abdomen, causing her to creak. Following the attack, Nai Yinying used her concealed knife and threw it, dubbing it the red sleeve flying knife. Cheng Dalei was overwhelmed and was struck by some of the knives, feeling them pierce his shoulders while managing to deflect others. Powerless, Lai Wan'er cried out hysterically, calling out to Cheng Dalei. The two fought with intense speed, but only a few minutes had passed. Nai Yinying realized that the poison was taking effect, believed it was over. She declared to Cheng Dalei that she would take his life for those who had died at his hands. In a swift motion, Lai Wan'er ran towards Cheng Dalei, protecting him. She yelled for Nai Yinying to stop and worriedly inquired if Cheng Dalei was alright. Cheng Dalei coughed slightly and noted that Nai Yinying was very strong, instructing Lai Wan'er to hide behind him. In disbelief, Nai Yinying stammered as she mentioned Lai Wan'er's name. She questioned Lai Wan'er's actions, telling her to get away as she was going to kill him. Terrified, Lai Wan'er queried why Nai Yinying had a feud with Cheng Dalei. She reminded her that she had saved her, asking if this was how she repaid her. Struggling, Cheng Dalei inquired if they knew each other. Nai Yinying angrily retorted to Lai Wan'er that Cheng Dalei was the bandit who had taken her away, questioning why she was protecting him. She accused Cheng Dalei of trying to take advantage of Lai Wan'er. Uncomfortable, Lai Wan'er confronted Nai Yinying again, cursing her and stating that if she must kill Cheng Dalei, she should kill her first. Hostile, she asserted that if anything happened to Cheng Dalei, she didn't want to live anymore, daring her to come and kill her. Nai Yinying, stumbling, questioned Lai Wan'er about the nature of her relationship with Cheng Dalei, asking if he was truly worthy of her protection. Lai Wan'er responded bitterly, questioning her question about what kind of person he was, emphasizing that she had said many times before. She described Cheng Dalei as a playboy, a slow-witted blockhead, and the biggest jerk in the world. But she also acknowledged that he had saved her life and was the only person who had entered her heart. 
with joy, she referred to Cheng Dalei's name, calling him the man she liked. Nai Yinyang was shocked by Lai Wan Er's words, questioning if she was kidding and addressing him as a mountain bandit. Worn out, Cheng Dalei murmured Lai Wan Er's name quietly. Suddenly, Hart intervened, providing suspenseful information that the trigger conditions were met and the possession had been lifted. A notification appeared, indicating that the Snatch the Fort Mistress quest had been triggered. Hart informed Cheng Dalei that Lai Wan Er's wife's task was very special, warning that while the target's favorability may be high if it wasn't handled properly, the harem would burn. Persistent, Nai Yinyang asserted that Cheng Dalei had committed many evil deeds, resulting in the deaths of numerous innocent people. Furious, she inquired how he could be the kind, righteous, courageous, and resourceful person that Lai Wan Er had described. Nai Yinying hypothesized that perhaps Lai Wan Er was attempting to sacrifice herself and wanted Cheng Dalei to let her escape. She also pondered that the highly poisonous sword might have an effect just from touching him but wondered whether it had only paralyzed his body. Concerned, Lai Wan Er questioned Cheng Dalei if he was feeling unwell as he groaned in pain. Cheng Dalei realized, realizing that the assassin's stabbing technique was intended to kill in one blow, and feared that if he were struck again, he would fall by her hands. He summoned Hart and requested her to go to the system store to exchange points for an antidote pill. Immediately, a beep sounded, deducting 30,000 fear points, and announced the obtained antidote pill. It was advertised to neutralize all types of poison in the world, taking effect in three minutes without adding preservatives, and was described as safe and fast. Hart also highlighted that the products produced by the system were of excellent quality, with the most important feature being its strawberry flavor. Meanwhile, Nai Yinying urged Lai Wan Er to go with her, suggesting that her martial arts skills were very strong. She reassured her that even if Cheng Dalei sent people to retaliate, she could defeat them all. Disappointed, Lai Wan Er asked why Nai Yinying was acting so ridiculously. She helped Cheng Dalei to lie down and advised not to move, offering to help suck out the poisonous blood. Injured, Cheng Dalei replied that she didn't have to as he had an antidote in his pocket. Lai Wanner retrieved it and placed it in his mouth, suffering as she was still crying. She thought whether the truth of his words depended on this incident. Cheng Dalei was surprised by Lai Wanner's actions. Suddenly, she kissed Cheng Dalei passionately, hoping her kiss would heal him. Embarrassed, Lai Wanner kissed him deeply, while Cheng Dalei's eyes widened in surprise, murmuring. Nai Yinying just stood in front of them, unsure of what to do and feeling awkward. Suddenly, Cheng Dalei's men entered the room and addressed him upon opening the door. But they were taken aback by the situation, with Gao Feibao being surprised, while the rest of the men commented that they seemed to have arrived at a bad time and awkwardly complimented Cheng Dalei. Nai Yinying watched anxiously and escaped using the flying swallow stance technique, slipping through the hole she had made. Gao Feihu noted that it wasn't good that the assassin had escaped. He praised Nai Yin Yang's skills, admiring her great light steps. After their kiss, Cheng Dalei gently caressed Lai Wan Er and mentioned that he couldn't breathe. Blushing, Lai Wan Er uttered Cheng Dalei's name. Surprised, she inquired if he was okay, while Cheng Dalei wiped her lips and confirmed that he was. He mentioned that the antidote was working and even noted that it had a strawberry flavor, which Lai Wan Er didn't expect it. Frustrated, Cheng Dalei urged his men questioning why they were standing around and looking, mentioning that Nai Yinyang was getting away and ordering them to go after her. Spaced out for a second, Gao Feibao responded that they didn't see anything. Swiftly, he commanded his army troops to notify the whole army and seal off the entire city, assuring Cheng Dalei not to worry as they would find the assassin and hand her over for interrogation. He declared that the entire city would search for her and she wouldn't escape, even if they had to search every inch. He shouted for them to go. Drawing his sword, Cheng Dalei instructed to stay, mentioning that Nai Yinyang had been wounded and was at her weakest. He believed it was best to kill her that day, as leaving her alive would pose a significant threat. Then Lai Wanner called out to Cheng Dalei, struggling to hold back tears as she looked at him. Finding it difficult to speak as she stuttered, she apologized profusely, stating that she was the outsider he had taken in. She apologized once again, expressing that she genuinely didn't know Nai Yinyang was an assassin. She broke into sobs as she continued to apologize to Cheng Dalei. She repeatedly apologized to Cheng Dalei as she hugged him, causing Cheng Dalei to call her a fool and wiped away her tears, reassuring her that it wasn't her fault. Cheng Dalei stopped Lai Wan Er and asked her who would have said that there would be assassins in the world who would get themselves seriously injured before attacking. He assured her that he wasn't afraid, as they were a den of bandits. He added that it wasn't something Lai Wan Er could have foreseen, and she shouldn't worry. Lai Wan Er pleaded with him not to go, fearing he couldn't defeat Nai Yinyang. 
Cheng Dalei disagreed with Lai Wan'er, telling her that he was better than Nai Yinying, and if she hadn't ambushed him with poison, he wouldn't have lost her. He asserted that in a head-to-head -head fight, Nai Yinying couldn't beat him. Concerned, Lai Wan'er inquired about his injury, her voice trembling. Cheng Dalei reassured her again that he wouldn't let her down and promised to discuss their matters once he was done dealing with Nai Yinying. He instructed Lai Wan'er to be patient and wait for him to return and Lai Wan'er nodded. After Cheng Dalei had simply bandaged, he commanded someone to prepare the Black Bull. In response, there was hesitation, as it was noted that Black Bull was not feeling well and still recuperating, which was acceptable. Cheng Dalei also asked about Yin Mu's whereabouts, instructing them to summon Yin Mu, while Lai Wan'er observed him from the window. A relieved smile adorned Lai Wan'er's face as she considered that despite Cheng Dalei being poisoned just now, he remained alive and energetic, watching him. She deliberated whether his body had indeed recovered, pondering if she could actually cure him by kissing him. Meanwhile, Cheng Dalei informed Yin Mu to accompany him to catch an assassin. Yin Mu hesitated in response, prompting Cheng Dalei to question why she intended to feed the Black Bull when she had just done so, with Yin Mu whistling in response. Cheng Dalei pointed out that Black Bull had a big appetite now, concurring that she could allow him to starve all night, and Yin Mu whistled again. Lai Wan'er smiled as she observed Cheng Dalei, while he grasped what Yin Mu stated, that she could not resist the urge to play a game. Yin Mu nodded in response. Inside the room, Lai Wan'er gazed at the night sky, her eyes fixed on the moon as she reminisced about memories with her father, remembering the time when her father advised that she had to marry, and that sooner or later she would encounter someone. She softly mentioned her father's name. Turning away from the window, she sat down and considered that she had truly found that person. A smile formed on her face as she experienced a rush of excitement. She thought about what she should do next. Meanwhile, on the bustling streets of Toad City, Liu Jai and Su Ying strolled together while holding her child's hand, with Fan Li Hua as well. They took pleasure in the sights of the festival, engaging in playful banter as they moved. Suddenly, Su Ying spotted a swift shadow on the roof, prompting her to inquire who it was, noting the light step skills. The clamor of approaching soldiers caught their attention, and Liu Jai asked about the commotion. Dao Feibao confirmed that an assassin had infiltrated the city, relaying Cheng Dalei's orders for a whole city search. He also warned his soldiers against shooting arrows to avoid injuring civilians. As the soldiers navigated through the streets, Su Ying reflected on the heightened security due to the Lantern Festival held in the city, which prevented people from causing trouble, and that all the guards were on alert. She wondered why an assassin would choose such a time to act. Glancing at Fan Lihua, Su Ying suggested they head back and that the festivities were over and Fan Lihua concurred. Then Kin Man interjected, dismissing the crowd repeatedly and instructing everyone to return home. He mentioned that his army was on the hunt for the assassin, prompting the dispersal of the people. Meanwhile, in another part of Toad City's central square, Zhu Shenji, Gao Feibao, and Zhang Fei were seen enjoying a large jug of wine. Suddenly, their man approached them and alerted Zhang Fei and Gao Feibao's attention and reported that something had occurred. But amidst his report, the trio laughed heartily. The trio's laughter halted, and Gao Feibao, visibly angered, cursed, stating that someone had dared to target Cheng Dalei. Similarly, Zhang Fei, also incensed, inquired if Cheng Dalei had suffered from Nai Yinyang. Their man replied that Cheng Dalei hadn't suffered much. Zhang Fei, calling Gao Fei with fierce determination, proposed killing Nai Yinyang to protect Cheng Dalei. Zhu Shenji, visibly intoxicated, inquired about what was wrong, slurring his words as he wondered if there were no more drinks while watching the other two splash the water over their faces. Concerned, Gao Feibao asked Zhu Shenji if he could find his way home alone if he weren't drunk, and Zhu Shenji responded, still slurring. He retorted not to underestimate him, claiming that he could hold his liquor well. He added that winning a drinking contest didn't make him overly proud of himself. Intoxicated, Zhu Shenji stated that he would show mercy on them as juniors, thus he let them go this time. He challenged them, questioning if they truly believed he was afraid of them. Then, he reluctantly drowned himself in a jug of wine, suggesting they drink again. However, Gao Feibao praised Zhu Shenji's strength, while Zhang Fei happily remarked that it appeared Zhu Shenji wasn't intoxicated after all. Gao Feibao added a comment that they weren't very drunk, considering their years of drinking, and wondered how Zhu Shenji could be worse than them. Zhang Fei mentioned that it was time to get to work and move on, while Zhu Shenji gulped down the wine as Gao Feibao and Zhang Fei were leaving. 
Soon after, Zhu Shenji began to hiccup uncontrollably, seeming to float in his drunkenness. After that, he stumbled and vomited heavily. Meanwhile, Nai Yinying escaped like the wind, while the troops followed her and shouted, urging others to capture her. Determined, Gao Feihu commanded his men to fire, and immediately they released the arrows towards Nai Yinyang. However, she skillfully evaded the arrows, using the flying swallow stance technique to dodge them. She slid skillfully downwards using the knife to aid her against the wall, and escaped from the city. Gao Feibao and the other troops were astonished, commenting that they couldn't believe they let her escape. Suddenly, two figures swiftly dashed out of the city, shocking Gao Feibao and his troops. Gao Feihu muttered questionably that was Cheng Dalei and Yin Mu. 